K Black Boxing coming to you with another video. I was just reading BoxingScene.com and uh, Terrence Crawford stated that he didn't know who Julius and Dongo was a year ago. And, you know, that's pretty much all of us. We didn't know who the hell Julius and Dongo was. You know, and it will make Julius and Dongo's story even better. You know, I was reading an article and he was basically saying that he didn't know who he was. Um, he stated that he wanted, you know, Crawford wanted to fight Tronowski, but Tronowski basically turned the fight down in order to fight Julius and Dongo. And we all know how that turned out. Tronowski ended up, by 30 seconds to the fight, ended up on his back, knocked out cold by a left straight type hook from my guy, Julius Blue Machine and Dongo. He said then later, you know, Terrence Crawford wanted to fight Ricky Burns, but Ricky Burns basically said he didn't really want to fight him at that particular time, not that early. He wanted to fight on Ndongo, you know, for a unification bout, then fight Terrence Crawford later because I guess, you know, one, Ricky Burns wanted to fight um, Terrence Crawford as well for unification later on in the line. But we seen out of that. we seen that Julius Ndongo outboxed the shit out of Ricky Burns. And this is why we got the fight this weekend coming up. Julius and Dongo's story is so special that this guy who was unknown at all. I mean, we didn't know who the hell this guy was. Like you say, it really was a, a tune-up type of cherry pick for Tronowski that turned upside down. And I'm, and I'm glad that it did happen just that way. I'm glad it happened that way. You know? And honestly, I'm glad that Ricky Burns took on that challenge to fight. Uh, he, trying to, he was trying to dare to be great and fight, uh, you know, and fight Julius and Dongo to be, try to become a unified champion. But, you know, it just didn't work out in his favor. I'm glad that and Dongo beat Ricky Burns and Crawford and Dongo is definitely the two best fighters at 140. You know, too bad this fight has been overshadowed. And overcast and not being thoroughly promoted or thoroughly talked about by ESPN. Just the most significant fight of 2017, and it basically got zero to no buzz at all, and uh, other than the main uh, boxing fans. And it's sad that YouTubers have to come out here and amp up this fight compared to these the ESPN, who's the worldwide of sports, that can. You know, reaching millions upon millions of people. Every other epi you know, every other commercial should be promoting a fight like this. But you know how that goes, man. We, we they want to downplay it, you know. And so when Crawford R and Dongo become undisputed, they don't really want to give them the props. They still want to give all these other fighters pound for pound status, and they haven't did nearly enough. You know, but it is what it is, man. True boxing fans know that the winner of this fight will be the number one pound for pound fighter, whether they uh, recognize it or not. They definitely would be, you know, number one pound for pound fighter. No other fighter would have uh, six belts attached to them, whether it's a minor belt or ring magazine belt, in, including the four major belts. No other title holder would have that. This this fight would produce the true champion, a, tr a true king of their division. And I appreciate Crawford and Ndongo fighting each other, man. You know, Ndongo, like I said, his story is definitely special because um, in three straight fights, he would be fighting for titles. His third straight fight, he'd be fighting for a title, man, you know. His three straight fights that he would be fighting in somebody else's country, you know, to try to remain uh, victorious and try to become undisputed. Like I said, you know, both of these guys that had to go this route. You know, and Don could have fought Tronowski and then fought the rest of the scrubs in the IBF division. And they could have kept him busy. You know, Crawford could have just moved up and waited and said, forget it, hey, I'm trying to fight, you know, what's way division, because that's the money division anyway. But he decided to stay down. And, you know, just like it's all, the article stated that once he, uh, he didn't really know who he, who he was, but once he beat Tronowski and Ricky Burns, um, you know, he he basically said that's the guy he want to fight. And, you know, like I said, even after he fought Phyllis Diaz, I know he called out Keith Thurman and, um, and Manny Pacquiao, but he basically said, you know, I know Ndongo's out here somewhere. We can, you know, if I can't get those guys, I can fight him. So he called him out, you know what I mean? And 
and Don go oblige that because basically Terrence Crawford wanted to unify the whole division. He wanted all the titles before moving up anyway. So, you know, if he is able to do so, I hope he is able. I know Lippinus is like the next man in line for the IBF belt. And I hope that if he do become victorious on the 19th, that he can at least stay down at 140 to at least uh, to defend all the titles at least once or twice, man. You know, because I know it's going to be hard to, to keep all the belts. And I know it's going to be hard for him to not want to dare to be great and continue to move up, you know, because Terrence Crawford is a great fighter. I'm just glad that I'm get to witness an undisputed uh, fight in this decade, man. It's been over a decade since we've seen the last undisputed champion, which is Jermaine Taylor, man. And that's why I say it's, it's very significant. I know that Mayweather and McGregor is fighting the week after this, you know. And I know it's going to sell a whole lot. I know everybody's talking about it, and it's cool. I know that Mikey Garcia and Adrian Broner fought, you know, last month, the end of last month. I know they fought at 140. I know that's for a diamond belt and all that. I know they even got more uh, notoriety. And I know that next month is uh, Triple G and Canelo. And I'm not knocking none of those fights, man, you know. But all I'm saying is uh, and Dongo and Crawford definitely should have got way more love than this and way more support, man. It's going to be sad, you know, um, because – History is being made, you know. This is the first time in the social media area that we're going to have an undisputed champion. This is the first time in over a decade we're going to have an undisputed champion. We're going to have one person who will all, all four major titles, man. And going to add a minor title and a magazine title as well. You know, if Julius Ndongo is able to pull this off in eight months... He already done in just six months. He already did some phenomenal work by becoming a unified champion, from being unknown to becoming a unified champion. But if he was able to beat Terrence Crawford, he would have, he he would have been to be two undefeated fighters, you know, and trying to not skin Crawford if he's able to to beat Crawford. And uh, although Ricky Burns wasn't undefeated, but to still go to his home country as well and still beat him, you know, just like he did with Tronowski, and he's gonna try to do with uh, Bud Crawford. You know, uh, even though Bill Crawford's from Omaha, Nebraska, they fighting Lincoln, but he's still coming to the country, United States, to fight Bill Crawford, and he's still basically fighting him in his hometown because Lincoln is not that far from uh, Omaha. So um, it's going to be a good fight, man. But if Don goes, is able to pull, pull this off in eight months, man, if I said it before, he, he, he would have done way more than all y'all favorite fighters have ever done in just eight months' time, from being unknown to becoming... Uh, fight for undisputed supremacy. Even if he doesn't win, him just being in this bout have still done more than all you are uh, favorite fighters because he's fighting for history, he's fighting for legacy. Like I said, him and Terrence Crawford name would always be linked together. You know, when I'm talking to my grandkids when I get old as hell and I have all my grandchildren and children around me, I'm going to be like, you know, they're going to be like, Papa. Tell us the story, and I'm going to tell them about Julius and Don going to Terrence Crawford. I'm going to say, man, on the night of August 19, 2017, two warriors engaged, two kings, two phenomenal men got together to make history. This is going to last forever. And I'm going to show them, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I made videos, and I'm going to say that countless other people made videos um, on YouTube, like Blood Boston, like 70. 78 Sports TV, like Dan the Man Boxing. I know by that time we all gonna be old as hell and you know stuff like that. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna tell this story, man. It's gonna be totally honest. I'm gonna truly tell this story. And per, you, by the time I have grandchildren and all that, man, YouTube and all the rest of this stuff might not even be up. But I'm going to say that not only did Terrence Crawford versus. Julius Dongo made history, but us as YouTubers, us as fans of this match, us as fans who want to see Undisputed has made history as well. If it wasn't for us, this fight wouldn't even be happening. So as I like I always say, man, I salute to the brothers that made that made uh, you know, countless videos about this about this. You know, 
it's good, man, to see the African people get behind George and Dongo because I'm just telling you the truth, if he's able to prove this off, the whole continent of Africa should be happy. And the whole sport of boxing should be happy. Because a man who's 34 years of age and that age is considered an old man in boxing. But a man at 34 years of age got the opportunity of a lifetime by traveling up to Russia. Try not to have to fight him, but I know he picked him as an opponent. That's all he was. He just picked him as an opponent because he he thought it was going you know, to be easy work. But it, it turned out to be more than he can handle. And if it wasn't for Julius Ndongo landing that perfect left at that particular time, we wouldn't know. We still wouldn't know who he was. But he landed. He had the opportunity, and he did what he had to do. And... He, he made the best of his opportunity, you know. And I think, like I said, Ricky Burns, if it wasn't for Ricky Burns, I, I even think Tronowski for giving, cherry-picking Julius and Dago. And I, I give props to and thank Ricky Burns for giving him a fight too so he can get both of those titles. And I thank Terrence Crawford even more for not thinking that he's bigger, better, even if that's the case. Than giving an opponent, giving a fighter that's relatively unknown a shot. And I'm glad that Julius Ndongo rose up to the, you know, uh, rose up to the competition. I'm glad that he was willing to go to those guys back, uh, backyards and was able to produce the outcome that he produced. You know, I'm, I'm th- you know, I'm impressed with both of these brothers. That's why I'm not gonna make a prediction, man. But I'm thoroughly impressed with both of these brothers. Uh, I seen both of them working out, man. They got high respect for each other, and that's what's up because they know it's gonna be uh, for all the marbles. And one, and I'm be telling you, totally honest, man. The winner of this fight is the person who make the less mistakes because both of these guys come in a fight. And Dango, we still haven't seen the best friend Dango. That's what I'm saying. See, we seen him two times so far. We seen a knockout victory and we see a thorough outboxing victory, but we still haven't seen the best. Like his trainer was saying that he said he's gonna gonna do the. Mayweather shoulder roll, maybe he might do the fly, he might do this. I mean, the way that Ndongo, I've seen him running, man, the way his physique is, he's long, he's, he's uh, you know, man, he's, you know, he can pose a real serious threat. And like I said, a couple, I know a couple weeks ago I read that uh, Crawford trainer believed that Ndongo would not be a tougher opponent than Post I was, but I, I bet the difference. I truly believe that this is going to be uh, – the outcoming of uh, Terrence Crawford. I know we ever seen Terrence Crawford fight, go on medalists and Felix Diaz and uh, Yuri Yorkis can boy. We've seen them fight all different type of styles. You know, Olympians, ex-Olympians, ex-gold medalists, you know, just rough, rugged, tough fighters. But, and he always rose to the occasion. You know, I just think that Julius Ndongo posed a threat of, um, that those other fighters couldn't pose, and that's the the threat of back being against the wall and not and knowing that if he lose, that he he basically gonna be rolled off in history and never uh, other than real boxing fans, nobody's ever gonna mention this guy. You know, so you know this that's the reason why he went to those guys' countries and was willing to fight, and that's the reason why he's doing it right now because he knows that this is his last opportunity, and if he lose, it's over for him. Cause he's already thirty four years of age, no matter what, you know. But I'm I'm gonna keep rooting for him, you know. And I hope, and if he does, even if he uh, even if he does lose, I'm gonna continue to check for uh, and I go, and I hope he don't um, you know, just fade and, and just fade off into the sunset, man. I hope he continues to stay relevant and do what he has to do, man. Cause he got a lot of people looking up to him, man. All those guys in this country, all those little boxers in this country, man, is definitely looking up to him. And, um, you know, he has nothing to be ashamed of. Man, this is K Black Boxing, and I'm signing off like, comment, subscribe.